Tantrums and fights can make kids a nightmare to deal with. But what happens when they actually turn out downright evil? That you were gonna kill Seth Jackson. The plan came together in the mob two minutes. Let's take a look at three examples of murderous children. Starting with Amber Wright, who decided to get her ex-boyfriend out of her life permanently. This is 15-year-old Amber Wright confessing to the murder of Seth Jackson on April 17th, 2011. She appears to be the victim of coercion, but when the truth is revealed, it becomes clear this teenager is nothing but pure evil. Are you out of your mind, girl? You're just sitting here telling me you just planned a murder. She and Seath, also 15, had recently begun dating. Although the two lived in separate towns, they seemed to get pretty serious in a short space of time. But according to Seath's parents, Amber was manipulative and their relationship was extremely toxic. Things took a nosedive when Seath accused Amber of cheating with an older boy. It's not actually clear whether she had cheated on him with an 18-year-old named Michael Bargo, but that didn't seem to matter to Seath, who publicly slated him on his Facebook. Amber and Seath broke up, but a couple of months after this, they still maintained contact with each other, although the conversations were mostly aggressive. So Michael sat down one night and suggested to Amber that they take her ex out of the picture for good. Michael and Amber planned to murder Seath with the help of her 16-year-old brother Kyle and friends Charlie Eli, 18, and Justin Soto, who at 20 was the oldest and should have known better. Okay, I just need you to tell me the story. And let's start with the other night. Well, me and him were already talking on the phone. Me and him. Seth. Okay, you and Seth. Did Seth call you or did you call Seth? Well, he had called me a couple days before that and I didn't answer. Okay. So I called him that night. And you and Seth, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, okay? You two had had a relationship. So he was physically abusive to you? Who all knew that? Me, Charlie, my brother. Okay, so Kyle knew about it. Did did Mike know about it? Was it was there a lot of people in the neighborhood just that ran around with you guys that knew this? Yeah. Okay. This was a bold-faced lie. She had actually told everyone that Seath was abusive, but this was all just to paint herself as the victim. When Seath received a text message from Amber asking to meet and work things out, he jumped at the chance, something Amber was able to take advantage of. So Seth had called you a few days before. Mm -hmm. You called him back, and what day was that? Uh, that's Today's Tuesday. Yeah. Um, I think it was Sunday night. Sunday night? It was the night that this all happened. Okay, so you called Seth, and what did Seth say? Well, it started off, I was like, hey, I know you called me the other day, and I didn't answer, but you wanted to make up, so do you want to make up or like try and be friends or something, because I'm sorry for everything. And he was like, yeah, I think that'd be a good idea for the both of us, because we're both tired of fighting with each other, but we just wanted to stop the drama, because we were friends before we were dating. Okay. We were really close. Okay, okay, so you guys... Went down there and talked. We were talking for maybe like not even 30 minutes. Okay. And his mom, I guess, texted him and I was like, Who are you texting? I thought we were talking. And he was like, My mom told me either right now or never. Look, I'm not in the mood to talk right now. I'm getting out of here for now. I'll see you around. And he walks off. Okay. And I was like, Okay, I guess. So Charlie's like, Well, do you want to just walk back down to the house? And I was like, Yeah, I guess. So we got back down to her house. We were watching TV. And then, like, an hour later, Seth comes knocking on the door. Charlie answered it and was like, what do you want? And he was like, can I just talk to Amber so we can figure things out? But this isn't how things went down at all. And an elaborate story is spun to try and get herself off the hook from a murder charge. And Kyle's in the living room. What's Kyle doing? Kyle just sits there and watches TV like he always does. Okay, so he's just watching TV in the living room. Mike's in the bedroom. Okay, and then what happens? Seth comes Seth to the house? Seth knocked on the door and Charlie answered it. And she was like, well, what do you want? And he was like, I just need to talk to Amber. Can I come in? She let him in. He sits in the chair. Me and her are sitting by each other on the couch. And I don't know where Kyle just gets up and hits him. Me where was Kyle sitting when Seth came in the house? There's a couch. Like, the kitchen is whenever you first walk in the house. Okay. And then it's the living room. The couch was up against this wall. Okay. And then here's another couch. And then the chair was right here. So the couch and the chair is here. Uh-huh. Seth was here. And Kyle was like, on this end, Kyle just got up out of nowhere. What did he say? Did he say anything to Seth? No. Like, I didn't know that if he, like, I didn't think anything was going to happen. I mean, because I never knew Kyle would just get out of nowhere and hit somebody like that. What did Kyle hit him with? I don't know what he grabbed. Do you know where he grabbed it from? It was on the floor. Okay. And, like, as soon as he got up and, like, he went towards Seth and hit him, I looked at Charlie, I was like, run. We ran to her room. 
I went to her bathroom and shut the door. Okay. And then we heard a door flew open, and then we just. Did heard, you hear Kyle say anything to say? Kyle just said, "Now get the f out of my house." Okay. That's. So there was no argument before that. No. Nothing like that. No, it was just got up right him, now. He hit him like one time that I know of, mm -hmm. and then he walked away and said, "Get the f out of my house." What did Seth do after uh, Kyle hit him? He got up. And me and Charlie took off to her room and locked her, so like, she didn't walk in her bathroom, but we slammed the door. What, did you just stand up from the chair? Did you stand up and walk out the door, or? He just jumped up, okay. and by then, me and Charlie took off to her okay. room. We shut the bathroom door, then we heard another door just fly open, and we just heard gunshot after gunshot after gunshot. Seath arrived at the agreed address and found himself surrounded and in deep trouble. He was hit in the head and then shot, and yet he still managed to break free and try to escape to safety. He almost made it to the road, but was brutally gunned down before being dragged back into the house. Michael Bargo was the one who fired every single bullet. And after maybe like five or six times of hearing it, it got quiet. And then you hear Kyle go, what did you just do? And then Michael went in the room and was like, if you say one word of what I did, I will have two more bodies. To went get into what room with you and Charlie? He just walks in the room and was like, if you say anything or even come out of this room, there's just going to be two extra bodies to get rid of. So me and Charlie were pretty much stuck in her room the whole time. Okay. Did you hear Michael say anything to Seth? No. Mm. Because whenever I was out there, he didn't. Michael wasn't out there when you were no. out there. He was just in his room. And one of me and Charlie. How long was it before when you ran from the living room after Kyle hit Seth and you ran into there? How long was it before you heard shots? Not even like not even a minute. They dumped his body into the bathtub, but they weren't finished there. In order to fit his body into a sleeping bag, they decided to break his knees with a hammer. If all this doesn't seem bad enough, they realized Seath was still alive, and so Michael shot him again. To try and cover up their heinous crime, they threw his body into a fire and cleaned down the crime scene. Okay. And just, we just laid there and we were just talking about how scared we were. She was like, should I go out there? And I was like, don't, because what if Mike does actually do something to you? Okay. So when did you guys finally come out of the room? The next morning. Okay, about what time? We didn't wake up till maybe 11, 12 o'clock. Okay. And what did you do when you came out? We just looked around and there was nothing around. What, was anything different? Oh, it's, it just smelled like pure bleach in my house. That's it. Do you know where the bleach came from? No. Uh, you, do you spend a lot of time at Charlie's house? Yeah, like, I stay the night there a couple nights because my brother lives there. Sure. Have you ever seen bleach around there before? Mm -hmm. I mean, because I've cleaned the kitchen. Uh -huh. I've rearranged the room, but I've never seen it. No, not on top of the refrigerator? There wasn't no. any bleach on top of the well, refrigerator? I think the, the cereal's on top of the refrigerator, and then there's, like, all these dishes everywhere and just food. There's never any bleach or cleaning supplies but soap in the house. Okay. So that night, you didn't know, you had no idea there was any bleach in the house. Mm -hmm. As far as you were concerned, there hasn't been any in the mm -hmm. house. Did you hear anybody leave the house? Mm -hmm. Anybody have a vehicle? No one there has a vehicle. Everybody walks everywhere they go. So it would be unusual to have a couple gallons of bleach at that house. Yeah. I have a problem when trying to find out where the bleach came from. I'm almost thinking, I wonder if Mike went down to his grandmother's. Well, Mike did go to his grandma's that day. His grandmother like, only lives a few blocks from us. Okay, but that night, when you came, so that would it, the bleach had to come from somewhere, but it was at night the bleach had to come because when you guys got up in the morning at 11 or so, mm -hmm. you smelled bleach. Yeah, like but after the thing happened at night and we woke up, we walked out and we went and we looked around the room to see if we could see anything or see. Did you see any blood? No, everything was normal. The only thing different was the kitchen and living room was like a very strong smell of bleach. Okay. Like they try to clean something up. Okay. Who, who do you mean when they say they? Like Mike. Okay. I don't know if. Do you Kyle... know if anybody else was there? No. It was just Did you hear coming. anybody else come? Mm -mm. Did you hear anybody leave? Did you hear a vehicle? I've heard the door open and close several times, and that's it. The door of the house. Yeah, the front door. Okay. Um. Are you familiar with any uh, paint buckets there? Was there paint buckets? Yeah, she had paint buckets from paint in her house. Okay, how big were they? Maybe like this tall. Okay, so they're kind of five gallon buckets? Yeah. Okay. Did you, where were they at? 
They were in the kitchen full of paint. Okay, so they were inside of the house full yeah. of paint. Okay, so she I was... know I'd, every time I'd sweep up the floor, I had to move the bucket so I can get around. Were they there in the morning? Mm hmm Do you know where they went? Mm hmm There was pretty much nothing left in the kitchen but the dishes and the food. Like everything that was on the floor was gone. Those paint buckets that had gone missing were used to store Seath's ashes before they were dumped. Amber knew this all along. She must have thought she was getting away with murder, but little did she know her brother Kyle had confessed everything in the room next door. And it was all caught on camera. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Do you mind if I talk to her again? Okay, I'm going to bring um, Kyle in here with you, okay? okay. Okay, so it's this right here, and right now Amber is where the rubber hits the road. Notice how she had been put into a smaller room, and the comfortable couch is gone, replaced by a hard chair. The detective's body language should give the game away, that now she means business. Okay, your brother told me everything. So you can sit there and you can continue to lie on and walk out and treat you like a piece of garbage? Or you can sit here and treat me with the respect that I've treated you with, okay? And you can tell me the truth. Yes. What's your choice going to be? No, the truth. Okay, speak up so I can hear you too, okay? Um, so let's start at the beginning again. Can you tell me this story? And the first time that I think you're lying, I'm getting up and walking out of here and I don't care what happens to you. Yes, Do you understand me? Yes, And Kyle hit Seth with the thing, and I flew against the counter, and I looked. Roach hit him with a stick, too? Yeah. Mm -hmm. and I Don't leave nothing out, because I'm telling you, I'm like, I'm like, yeah. going towards the door now. And Kyle hit him first. Kyle hit him first? How many times did Kyle hit him? As of right now, he only hit him once or twice, because I didn't look at it. I was in the kitchen, and Charlie was like, come to the room, come to the room, come to the room. I walked in the room with her. I was so shaken up. I'm staring at her. I'm crying. She's trying to hold me to stop crying. I'm about to puke from it all. And then they got him in the house and laid him on the floor. And Mike shot him again. On the floor? He saying anything at that time? What was Seth saying? He wasn't talking. Was he breathing? I don't know. Okay. I didn't really see him. Once he got out the door, and they dragged him in. I went to the room because I didn't want to see it. And all I heard in the room was more guns fires going off in the living room. And then I guess, and then Kyle, not cop, Roach, and Mike took him to the bathroom and I heard one more gunshot. And then all I hear is Mike yelling at him, just start cursing. Where's Seth's body now? They won't let me see it. They told me, Mike told me that me and Kyle, that he was gonna take it to the quarry in Lakeland. In Lakeland. Not Lakeland, in Gander Mountain. Michael Bargo was found guilty of first degree murder and was given the death sentence, where he would become the youngest inmate on death row in Florida. Amber and the other three defendants were also found guilty of first degree murder and all got life, but Charlie Eli has since been released after she accepted a lesser charge of second degree murder in 2020. Next, we look at two teens who not only broke the highway code, they completely ignored it and needlessly put innocent lives at risk. Dangerous driving can lead to tragedy. So what would happen if you decided to play a game of cat and mouse with a police car? Caleb Abbott and Dylan Bingham are about to find out. Bro, I was not resisting it. You saw me as soon as you got to me. Well, I resisting said, you running. It's, it's not. Resisting is trying to fucking fight back, dog. Sergeant Craig Teff was doing his routine patrol in the area of 4th Street and Ferry Street in the city of La Crosse on August 16th, 2021, when suddenly this night became a lot more than simple routine. Out of nowhere, a vehicle heading northbound on 4th Street almost collides with the sergeant's car and then veers away, narrowly avoiding a potentially dangerous driving accident. 
That traffic stop that Sergeant Teff initiated should have been the end of the matter, but the car sped off into the distance. You might wonder why Sergeant Teff didn't begin a pursuit. The reason was for safety. Many factors can go into determining whether to initiate or terminate a pursuit, and in this case, it appears it was too dangerous, and more harm could be done by causing the driver to speed off and take risky maneuvers. But this did not mean the suspects were going to get away. Just around the corner on West Avenue and La Crosse Street was Sergeant Sergeant Chris Oates, who watched as the car ran a red light and continued to drive at high speed. Again, he opted not to pursue. Caleb Abbott and Dylan Bingham must have known what they were doing as they sped down George and Gore Street, after evading police at every turn. But when Abbott took his eye off the ball, he crashed the car into a truck, bringing this joyride to an end. Despite all this, they still did not surrender and fled the scene. Thankfully, there had been witnesses, and before long, the police had managed to capture both sides. Suspects. What's up? You guys gonna stop? Forty out with two here. Please stop. Stop. Get on the ground right now. Get on the ground. Get on the ground. No, I don't got nothing on the ground. Okay, just get on the ground, please. Okay, you alright? Yeah, I don't got nothing, bro. I was in the passenger seat. I just got scared as f Why are you running? I was scared as f y'all chasing me. Okay. Put your hands on your back. I don't have nothing on me, officer. I was just scared as shit because he started running. Why is he running? I have no f***ing clue, dog. What's your buddy's name? What buddy? The guy in the blue that ran off. I just know him by Notch. Notch? That's all I know him by. You know Notch. him. Who is No, all I know him by is Notch or Nooch. It's just like an alias. Whose car he was calls that him. you guys were in? His car? He call, he, he just calls me Currency. Okay. I was just in the passenger seat, dog. I don't even know what the f*** is going on. These teens were in a lot of trouble, as they just lied to police about knowing each other, and when Abbott realized the scope of his situation, he went into a total meltdown. F***ing do anything, dog! What's going on, man? Dude! I don't want you to hurt yourself. Don't be banging Well, I brought my f***ing gun out! Okay, relax. What? What's what, do you think on? you're just because you're pretty? I'm not gonna f***ing to you just like the rest of them? You can to me all you want, but you're still gonna have to tell me what's going on. Is your head okay? No, bro, my head's not okay. I wanted to. No, dude, my head's not okay, okay? Okay. Do you need medical attention? Dylan, stop. Take a deep breath. Dude, I'm a disappointment. Take a deep breath. You're not a disappointment. A second, get out of jail. Blow my fing brains out. Take a deep breath. Keep breathing. Though that wasn't the end of their troubles, as police found a short-barreled shotgun with a pistol grip and a duffel bag at around the same spot that Bingham was hiding, and a taser in the passenger side of the vehicle. So, it seems these dangerous drivers might have been out for something more than just burning rubber. So they said that there was a witness, and the witness said that the red sweatshirt, the person carrying the red sweatshirt in the duffel bag was the one driving when they ran. Did this guy have a duffel bag? They said that when Office, no, th this was the only duffel bag. So they said that when officers, uh, or when, when whoever, he kept the black duffel bag, so unless they switched while they're running, he said that it's possible that the witness just mixed them up, yeah. So what's going on with the shotgun? Shotgun. Yeah. What about it? Whose is it? Not in my possession, was it? Nope. Exactly. Okay. Now I'm gonna tell you straight up, it's not mine. I've been straight forward with you this whole time. It's not mine. Okay. So obviously we kind of know what's going on even though we don't know, like you're not telling us. Yeah, I, yeah. Get, I get that, yeah. but I'm telling you it's not mine. Was it in my possession? Uh, I know. No, it's it wasn't. Like, it was so not my shot. Here's the deal, man. If both you guys uh, are, not, neither one gives us any information. He's not giving okay. you information because he told me then, then, if some shit happens that he's going to take the charge because it's his Okay, well, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, he's not doing that, so you both are going to end up getting charged for everything. Okay, we get this is some bullshit. fucking bullshit. Well, it's they, his. And, that's, and that's why we're yeah. asking you. It's his, and he told me if anything fucking happens, I'm going down for that because it's fucking mine. 
Okay. So I'm not going down for that right. bull. He's not, he's not taking the fall like he said he would. <laughs> Abbott was arrested and charged with fleeing an officer, resisting arrest, three counts of misdemeanor bail jumping, while Bingham was found guilty of possession of a firearm, possession of an electric weapon, resisting or obstructing an officer, and a probation violation. Oh, it rolled up on you. Bro, I was not resisting it. You saw me as soon as you got to me. Well, I resisting said, you running. It's it's not resisting is trying to fucking fight back, dog. I was there and I said, all right, I'm right here, and I put my wallet and my phone on yeah, the I'm fucking not, ground, I'm not dog. About that part. Talk about chasing you uh, through the yards. Yeah, cause he started fucking running. What was I supposed to do? Just sit there and fucking be scared, bro? It's natural fucking instinct. God, bro. Considering how deadly the situation could have become, the teens escaped pretty lightly. The same can't be said for this next 12-year-old, who just found out what happens when you take on a bunch of cops. Some kids can be tough to deal with, especially when they don't get their own way, but 12-year-old Isaiah Brown takes things to a whole new level. April 2019, Sacramento police were patrolling near a carnival that was in town when they spotted a security guard struggling to deal with a young man who appeared to be out of control. Control. He was accused of panhandling items on the street and selling merchandise illegally. And when the guard intervened, the suspect became so unruly that the police had no choice but to step in. When Isaiah Brown realized he was actually being arrested, all hell broke loose. No, I'm gonna have to do it. No, no. Just do what did he do? 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 We're not letting you go, bud. Calm down. He's notorious for being around here, trespassing on the properties. Hey, what I've been doing nothing. Hey, bud. Hey. Hey. You all right? Either he was chasing me all over the To be contact with his parents, something. No, you've been chasing me, bud. You boss, know that's a goddamn lie. What's your name? What's your name, boss? How, how old are you? What are you? Man, what, what the fuck? That's what I'm yeah, trying to find out. You can't do this. You can't do this. Hey, 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 hey. You can't do this. What's your name on your badge number? Let me go. Let me go. No, I got it. What's your name on your badge number? Yeah, it's Okay, and what's your name and badge number, ma'am? Whoa, whoa, whoa. You're touching me. Stop. You're touching me. 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 Hey, stop, stop, stop. Hey, we're, look. I don't, I don't care. Let me go. Let me go. Back in the car. No, you're not. Yes. I ain't do nothing to you. Remember that. Okay. You I ain't do nothing to you. It doesn't matter. You guys are doing this to a little ass kid. I don't care. His parents should be Charles, here. Can we get one more? Yes. Yeah. Like Listen that. to you. My parents should be here. What is she doing? What is she doing? What the fuck is she doing, Dude, dude? That's fucking it. You just spit on me. That's it. Yeah, I spit on your bitch. You heard him right. He just spat at an officer, leaving them with no choice but to take drastic measures. Hey, 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 watch him. Watch out, don't be choking him like that. What are Stop, you no, doing? No, no. Watch out, your hands off his neck, bro. What are you doing? Stop kicking. Stop fucking yeah. hands off his neck. You can't be doing that shit. Get back, sir. Yo, back don't up. touch me. Don't touch me. Back up. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. I will arrest you for. Don't touch me. For what? For what? For my scene, For what? For what? What can you arrest me for? For what? What can you arrest me for? I don't care. I don't want your bitch ass. Get her, bitch. Fuck. Come on, don't have. Get him on the ground. Fucking racist ass, bitch. 21, sir. 
Start my other unit code, please. Holy shit, bitch. You ain't got no right to be doing this shit. You ain't got no right. No right. No right. Come on now. Come on now. Come on now. What is you doing? Okay. Yeah, I scare your bitch ass. You know what? Hey, hey. You need to calm down, dude. Calm down, okay? Oh, yeah. Look, 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 look. Sarge, can you get back, please? Yeah, bitch ass face. Yeah, spin in your face, bitch. What you gonna do? What you gonna do? We're gonna go to Juvie now, dude. No, I'm gonna fuck. Fuck, you got me fucked up, bro. I do shit. Well, let me the fuck up. No. Spin on me. Do you have a spit mask, dude? Yeah, I spit on Oh, I know you. Yeah, I spit on him. I'll spit on your punk ass. Yeah, he is just a little terrorist. I'm saying, bust up resistance, bro. He spit on me like three times. In the face. On me, in the face, so. In your face, bitch. Alright, that escalated. I did not need to go this way. Alright, we need to get him in the car. I spit on your bitch ass, too. In this case, it looks like the officers were following their training, which states that spit hoods may be used when it is believed a suspect may spit or even bite someone in a sensitive area. Yeah. Yeah. Right, let me up, bud. Oh, yeah. 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 They are not generally used on suspects this young, but even though he's only 12, Isaiah is fighting his detention every step of the way. His attorney, Mark T. Harris, later claimed Isaiah was with a group of adults and children from his neighborhood and was sent to get change for the carnival. Harris, along with community activists, said the use of force was way over the top, but let's face it, that kid was aggressive and did spit at the officers. What else can you expect to happen when you put up a fight like that? But witnesses claim that the officers put the hood on him simply to shut him up. Part of the problem was that Isaiah was born with upper respiratory complications and had problems breathing. Although he didn't seem to have problems catching his breath to hurl abuse towards the police.
Sacramento Police Chief Daniel Hahn later told reporters that, I'm grateful that our officers were willing to proactively intervene when they observed suspicious activity and that nobody was injured during this encounter. The Brown family disagreed and a lawsuit was filed against the Sacramento Police Department in October 2019, where they were chasing damages of $100,000 in a case that is still ongoing as of November 2023.